Alrighty, I am back with chapter six from Summer with the Marine, our little read-along series that I'm doing here. All of the previous chapters can be found um, on my IGTV. And so I'm gonna get started and I wanna thank you all for joining me and listening along, reading along. Um, I should note, and I actually will put this in a story, um, that the book is free. It's free across all platforms. Um, it's part of a series, it's the first in series, um, called Blue Bait Beach. And so um, here we go. Chapter six, Ford. Ford waited on the other side of the screen door at number four Pelican Lane. The cottage was cute, cozy, and he could probably fit a dozen inside the mansion he currently resided in. Not that he needed that much space. He'd become accustomed to a tent or a bunk if he was lucky, though he wouldn't deny that a king-sized bed was far more comfortable. A dull whirring sound came from inside the house and Ford knocked again. He didn't want to be rude, but movement from the other side of the screen caught his attention. Isley turned and rushed toward the door. Her hair was pulled into a messy ponytail on top of her head, with loose strands falling into her face. She wore a t-shirt that said, Sunny Side Up. She was always so cheerful and optimistic, she even wore her sunny disposition on her sleeve, or her shirt, as it were. But she could also be forgetful. He'd often meet her on the way to school, and she'd be reading or distracted by one thing or another. Didn't, did you forget about our... She, as she pulled open the screen door, she threw her first finger in front of her lips in the universal signal for quiet. He couldn't deny that the attention drawn to her lips at that moment sent a flare through him that he hadn't experienced in a long time. She shook her head. A smudge of something white was on her cheek. He lifted his finger and wiped it away. What had been what had been a flare turned into a flame, threatening to engulf him. He stepped back. Color rose to her cheeks, and her eyes floated from his thumb to his eyes. Her honey-brown eyes melted him. He was combusting. Sure, he was used to dry desert heat from when he was serving, but the humidity in Florida must have been getting to him. He let out a long, ragged exhale. I didn't forget about her, she swallowed, Blink her, blinked her eyes, closed a moment. Then she took over, then she looked over each of her shoulders. I didn't forget about her date, she hissed. I just didn't want my mother to make a fuss. She was the one who seemed flustered. He looked over her shoulder toward the whirring sound still coming from the kitchen. I got caught up in a project trying to distract. Never mind, I'll be just five minutes. She rushed up to a loft space, which must have been her room. And I'll be right here. At that, what may as well have been one of the seabirds cawing issued from the back of the house. My word, what do we have here? Mrs. Higgins approached him with her arms lifted and ready, ready for one of her mama bear hugs. He'd only received a handful from her over the years, but she was the most maternal person he'd had in his life growing up. Ford Armstrong, you sure are a sight for sore eyes. She was slightly shorter and fluffier than when he'd last seen her, but her eyes sparkled and her smile was as wide as ever. Mom, Isley groaned in warning from the loft above. For a moment, Ford felt like a teenager all over again, like he was picking Isley up for a school dance or prom. Then again, he'd never done either of those things. They'd often gone as a group to events like homecoming without official dates. Prom was another story. He sighed. I just cannot believe, after all this time, you turn up here. Isley didn't mention... Yeah, I forgot, she called. Her voice was strained, either because she felt like she'd been caught trying to keep their reunion from her mom, or because she was hurrying to get ready so they could get out of there. Clearly, she was hoping her mother wasn't going to encounter him. Diana was an excitable person, but he didn't feel the need to hide. Then again, maybe Isley was trying to spare him, given his sudden departure from their lives. Likely, Mrs. Higgins had questions, too. Isley streaked by, wearing a sundress, and rushed into the bathroom. Mrs. Higgins took his hand and they sat down on the couch. She, she smiled tightly and then fell, it fell into a frown. Can I get you something to drink? Her tone was flat like sparkling water that lost its bubbles. Uh, I'm just fine, thank you. Ford clapped his hands on his thighs, suddenly feeling awkward like in, the mood in the room shifted like the tides. <clears throat> I've heard a lot has changed for you in recent years. For that reason, I'm willing to forgive you, but unless you're missing an action, do not, under any circumstances, leave my daughter or me to wonder if you're alive or dead ever again. Do you understand me, young man? Her Jersey accent came out thick and threatening. That was what Isley was probably trying to spare him from experiencing. Yes, ma'am. Ford almost saluted. She leaned back and folded her hands in her lap. Now, if you need anything at all, I'm right here. I only raised one child, but I raised her right, so you can trust me with you know. Thank you. That... That you did, yes. Mm hmm Did she know about the new addition in his life? Likely. Back in the neighborhood, she somehow knew everyone's business, but she wasn't a gossip. She just somehow knew things. Everything. Then something awful occurred to him. She was always waiting for word of her husband's return or recovery. Ford's chest suddenly ached. He knew what it was like to lose good men. Mrs. Higgins had lost her best man, her husband. Isley never knew Bob Isle Higgins. His chin dipped toward his chest. 
It was backward, completely backward, but it was then, Ford realized, part of the reason he'd left and never looked back. He knew the path of the soldier meant he might not return. He didn't want to get closer to Isley in the event she lost not one, but two of the men in her life. But that fear was the fear of a boy, a boy who'd clung to certainty whenever he could because his life was, because his life growing up had been so chaotic. It had been easier for him to make a clean break than to travel the unknown road of romance and service. Ford gasped a breath. You okay? Mrs. Higgins asked. His thoughts and stomach swam and a cold sweat prickled his hairline. It was almost as if a bomb of sudden comprehension had dropped into his lap. Despite that, he was okay because he understood something important about himself and his actions. He took a few deep breaths as his counselor had taught him. Yeah, I'm fine. Isley appeared from the bathroom. Her hair was smooth and her face bright. She seemed to take to life in Florida quickly and pleasantly. Ford got to his feet. Good chat, Mrs. Higgins. Confusion and concern rippled over Isley's features. Did you give him the Jersey Mama Bear smackdown? Mrs. Higgins laughed. No, we hardly talked. You helped me understand something important, he said to Mrs. Higgins in a low voice as Isley poked her head into the kitchen area. Well, I'm glad I can help. Her lips turned down and she shrugged. Ford gestured for Isley to go ahead of him out the door. She stopped on the steps to the porch and turned around to look up at him. The peppered sunlight from the canopy of trees illuminated her eyes. Is that your car? One of them, he muttered, and he was going to take her out on a date in it. The thrill of a second chance rocked through him. Then in a classic move from the movies, he jogged down the front path, leaped, and slid across the hood of the blue convertible. He landed on his feet on the other side. Mrs. Higgins, watching them leave from the porch, clapped. Isley giggled. Then Ford realized he ought to open the door for her. He scooted around to the passenger side, let her in, and then closed the door. He skipped doing the cool slide again and merely got behind the wheel. Have fun, kids, Mrs. Higgins called as he started the engine. The smell of leather, gasoline, and summer filled his nose. Come back for dessert, Mrs. Higgins added. Isley's been making ice cream. She came with just two suitcases, a broken lamp, and her ice cream maker. Go figure. Isley laughed as he drove down Pelican Lane. Is this really your car, she asked as they headed to the edge of town. It really is. Do you still have the old Ford pickup truck? I have that, a Jeep, and... He wasn't sure he wanted to talk about the sudden wealth he'd come into. He wasn't sure how he'd felt about it, but Mrs. Higgins mentioned Isley had only arrived home with two suitcases, a broken lamp, and an ice cream maker. Surely she owned a house or a condo by then. She'd gone to college. Although the rusty Honda in the parking lot looked like it was about to break down any moment, and she lived with her mother again. There was a story there, but he wasn't sure how to ask. The wind blew as they cruised to the drive-in movie theater, so it was hard to have a conversation. When they pulled into the field of the theater, the sun had nearly set in the west. The big screen was on the eastern side of the field, but still dark. Want to grab something to eat, Ford asked. Isley nodded, sure. Again, he opened the door for her. You're such a gentleman. Is this what going on a date with you in high school would have been? She abruptly cut herself off. You wouldn't have wanted to go on a date with that idiot. You're my best friend, not an idiot. That's why we didn't date. What do you mean? She asked as they slowly walked toward the concession stand. I didn't want to date you because I didn't want to ruin our friendship. No, wait, that's not exactly what I meant. That time, his own word choice tripped him up. He stopped and took her upper arms in his hands. He fought against pulling her to his chest, hugging her tightly, keeping her as close to him as possible. I can say this now, I think. Ford drew a deep breath. I did want to date you. I wanted to ask you on a date a thousand times, at least. But we were friends, and I didn't know if that's what you wanted or if... If? If you would say yes or if it would mess things up. So instead, you asked Jessica Sutherland to the prom. Isley's eyes were damp. Sorry, I don't know why I said that. It's in the past. Never mind. She started to walk toward the line by the order window. No, not never mind. Life is too short for never mind. He wanted to have a good time with Isley, but they needed to get the conversation about the past over with. They were overdue. Ten years overdue. Her gaze was imploring, as though she'd been waiting to hear what he was going to say for a long time. Strange thing was, he didn't know what he was going to say until just then. He thought of meeting her again enough times with the words had never formed before that moment. Isley, we both had our hardships growing up. You know what my family was like. You were a bright spot in my life, and I didn't want to do anything to mess with that. I clung to order. Why do you think I joined the Marines, the most regimented branch of the service? Of service. You were my anchor, and the military was my line to hold me steady when the sea got rough. She inclined her chin. Wow, really? She asked softly. Really. Pre Ford pressed his lips together, suddenly feeling foolish, but it was true. So much has happened recently. I don't even know where to begin, but I'm glad it all led me back to you. I know we can't exactly pick up where we left off, but I'd like to try. I'd like to at least be friends with you again. I guess that's a good place to start, she said. Being with Isley made him feel like he was 18 all over again and hadn't had the experiences that had hardened him and made him a man. But there was no denying those. 
yet the night was velvety, warm, and filled with possibilities. No, maybe it wasn't that she made him feel like a teenager. Perhaps he was going back in time to when they were kids. Some of the boys in the neighborhood would tease them with the song, First comes love, then comes marriage, then comes baby in the baby carriage. Well, he'd already done all of that, and that was why they had on, they had to only stay friends. I'll read that line again. Well, he'd already done all of that, and that was why they had to only stay friends. They got in line at the concession stand. The air smelled like popcorn and hot dogs, but a light breeze gusted Isley's scent, reminding him of how he'd had feelings for her that went beyond friendship. So, we can be friends, he asked. His voice tightened, but he restrained himself against desire. He knew better. He was no longer a boy, and he had an entirely new set of challenges he didn't want to saddle her with. The line shuffled forward, and they bumped into each other. She gripped his arm and left it there. Sure, we can be friends, but... <coughs> Excuse me. i will take a sip of water. My voice got scratchy. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Sure, we can be friends, but I thought this was a date, she said boldly. And I will be back soon with chapter seven. Thanks for listening.